This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I'll show you how to get the data from multiple sheets, each with different schema. I'll copy this data from multiple Excel files into two separate SQL Server tables, one table for each schema. We're just going to process the data from two Excel files in this demonstration. And each of the files um, that you can see here have just two sheets in them. And uh, the names of the sheets are Gaming Revenue and Tax Sale. And each sheet has different schema. You can see here the Gaming Revenue has a bunch of columns. And same thing here in the second file. And then the uh, tax sale sheet has just four columns in the second file, and in the first file, it also only has the four columns. So each sheet has a different schema. So we'll close these files, and we'll go over to Management Studio. And I've set up two different tables, one for the gaming revenue and one for the tax sale data and they're called Gaming Rev Table and Tax Sale Table. And there you can see both tables are empty right now. Now we'll go over to Visual Studio and start configuring the package. I'm going to start by setting up my variables. And I'll call the first one Sheet Name. And it'll be a string. And the value will make it Tax Sale dollar sign. And then I'll add another variable for the file pointer, I'll call it. So it'll be the full file path to the file that we're currently processing. So again, this will be a string, and I need to go get that file path. So I uh, hold down the shift and right mouse click on the first file, and then I go down to copy as path. I'll paste that in here. And then we'll start configuring the package by dragging the for each loop container onto the control flow canvas. And I'm going to do this in stages. First, I'll configure the part of the package that'll loop through the sheets in one of the Excel files. So we're setting up the tougher part of the package first to deal with multiple schema for the sheets. So I'm going to name this loop through sheets and double click to open the editor and then we'll go to collection and for the enumerator I'm going to choose 4hadio.net schema row set enumerator and then we'll set up a new connection and click on new again and up here for the provider, I need to expand the .NET providers for OLEDB and select the Microsoft Office 12.0 Access Database Engine OLEDB provider. And now I need to paste the uh, full file path here to that first Excel file. So that becomes a part of the um, connection manager for this container. And now I go to All, and I scroll up. And for extended properties, I type in Excel 12.0. We'll test the connection, and that's good. So I click OK, OK again. And now down here for Schema, we select Tables. And uh, that's how it refers to Sheets if you're working with Excel files. And then we go to Variable Mappings, and we'll use our sheet name variable here. And the index needs to be 2. And let me show you real quickly how I got that. So if you click on Set Restrictions here, it shows you the, the four pieces of information that will be returned for the table schema. And table name is the third one. And so we want the sheet name, so that's the one we want to work with. And that's the third object. 
And so this indexing starts with 0, so 0, 1, 2. Um, that's how we reference the third object returned. So we click OK. Now I'll go up and I'm going to use the data flow task. The first time it's not going to do anything. I mean this first one is just there basically to uh, be able to separate the path it takes based on the sheet name. So we'll say um, separate based on the sheet name. And then I'll drag another data flow task in here. And this first one will be used to process the gaming revenue. And then another one will be used to process the um, tax sale data. And we're going to be using precedence constraints to uh, get it to take the correct path ba based on the sheet name. So now I right mouse click on this arrow and, and then I select edit. And our evaluation operation will be an expression. And the expression is going to use the sheet name variable. And here we want to send the processing um, in this direction if sheet name is gaming revenue dollar sign and uh, we evaluate the expression and it's false because I set the initial value for sheet name to tax sale dollar sign so we can also test it from here and it says it validated the expression correctly and then we leave the logical and selected down there now we need to do the same thing on this arrow except for the tax sale worksheet. So again we select expression and then we drag the sheet name down here and check if it's equal to tax sale dollar sign and evaluate it and that is true. Click OK. OK again. Now we'll go actually configure the data flow behind the gaming revenue data flow task. And we'll start with the Excel source. And we want to make sure we know which one we're working on. So I'll say gaming revenue input. Double click on it. Set up a new connection manager. And this connection manager right now, we're just configuring it to point at one file, the first Excel file here. And click OK. We're going to modify that later to be dynamic. We'll leave this to table or view. And then we select the gaming revenue because we know that's the path we're on right now uh, based on the sheet name. And we can preview the data. And that definitely is our gaming revenue data in the first Excel file. So we're done configuring the source. Now we'll get the OLEDB destination. And again, uh, gaming revenue table. It's going to write to the table. So we'll connect the arrow, double click on the destination component. We need to configure the connection manager. We'll select the one for the new tutorials database, and then we select the gaming rev table here. We need to click on mappings now so that the source columns get mapped to the destination columns. And we click OK. Now we'll go back over to the control flow and double click on the tax sale data and basically do the same thing as we just did for gaming revenue. This will be tax sale input, double click. I already chose the connection manager for Excel. The sheet is tax sale. Click on preview. That's the tax sale data. And we click OK. 
And now we'll go get the OLEDB destination. And this is the tax sale table. We'll connect the source to the destination. Double click on the destination. Go find the tax sale table right there. Need to click on mappings to map the columns. Click OK. And we're done configuring the package. And remember now this time it's only going to work on one file, but it'll process both of the sheets in that first file. So I right mouse click on the name of the package and I select execute package. And that was successful, so we'll stop debugging. We'll go take a quick look at the data in Management Studio. So here we've selected all the data from the one file, the first Excel file, and written it into the two separate tables. So now we're going to clear all that data. You can see they're both empty now. Stay tuned to see how I add the functionality to process multiple files. Are you tired of updating packages because of changing metadata? How many hours have you spent accommodating new source and destination columns? How many nearly identical packages do you have to maintain? Especially when you need to update hundreds of them. Well, you should check out Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus component. Dataflow Task Plus provides the ability to acquire the metadata and map the columns at runtime. You can even use transformations on the data. Just add the changes at the source and destination, execute, and Dataflow Task Plus will handle the process of extracting, transforming, and loading the desired columns from the source to the destination without a need to change the existing package. It works with any standard SSIS Dataflow components transformations, and application adapters. No more manual package updates. Design your SSIS data flows with Dataflow Task Plus and save hundreds of hours. A vision of completely metadata-driven processing is now possible. Download Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus from CozyRock.com. It's free for testing and development within Visual Studio. Now we're back in Visual Studio, and I'm going to show you how to make some modifications so we can process both of the Excel files. So we're going to need a for each loop container to loop through each of the files in that folder. We'll drag the for each loop container onto the canvas. We'll change the name to loop through Excel files. And we double click to open it. We'll go to collection and the enumerator we want to use is for each file enumerator and here we need it to point to the folder so i'm going to have to find that and it's called opportunities and then the files we could leave it star dot star um, because there's only two files in there but we'll change this to say get all of the xlsx files and then we want to leave it to fully qualified we want the file path and the file name in there and then we go to variable mappings this is where we'll pick up the file pointer and we'll leave index set to zero and that's all we need to do there. And now we need to put this for each loop container inside the one for the files. So the outer one loops through the files and the inner one loops through the sheets in the file that is currently processing. And now because we need to be able to handle multiple files with different names, of course, we need to make our a couple of our connection managers dynamic and get it to use the file pointer. So I right mouse click on this connection manager, which is the one used by the inner for each loop 
container. And we go to Properties. And here you can see the Connection String property. And I'm going to copy that as it is. And then I'm going to go down to the Expressions here. I click on the three ellipses. And for the Connection String property, I'm going to set up an, an expression by clicking on those ellipses there. I'll start by pasting in the existing connection string between double quotes. And now, in place of this whole file path, including the file name, I want to put in um, a variable. So I put in quotes, double quotes, uh, plus sign, plus sign, double quotes. And I'll drag the file pointer variable down between the plus signs. And I'll evaluate the expression. And there you can see it put in um, the same thing it had there before, but now it's based on what's in the variable. So once that variable contains the second file, it'll put that second file, file path in there. OK. Now we're done with that connection manager. Now we also need to um, make the Excel connection manager dynamic. So again, I click on Properties. This time we'll be working with the Excel file path. So that's what needs to be made dynamic. So we select the Excel file path under the property. Click on the ellipsis to set up the expression and just drag the file pointer down here. Evaluate the expression, and it's just still pointing at the first file because that's what I set up for the uh, initial value of the variable. Click OK, and we'll close the Properties window. And now I'm going to save the package. And I'll right mouse click on the name of the package and select Execute Package. And it was successful, so I stopped debugging. And we'll go over to Management Studio, select all from both tables. And here you can see we have uh, now 20 records in here instead of just 10. And you can see the uh, data from the two different files where it changes from South Elgin to Wooddale under the municipality. And down here in the tax sale data, uh, again, we have 20 instead of just 10 rows. And uh, where the notes change to all empty lots, that's where we processed the second file. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.